were literally on the perimeter of the space and waiting for someone to enter the dance mm -hmm. is is it more generous like let's say the dance has begun is it more generous for me to enter or is it more generous for me to stay on the outside mm -hmm. and i think that's sort of what i'm tending to in a lot of my work <laughs> Hi, I'm the bucket of craft supplies that you ordered at 3 a.m. months and months ago, rattling in the closet to say hello. Phoebe. And I'm Jacques. <laughs> Welcome to Do You Ever Feel Like? Where we ask the questions and everyone's thinking and no one's answering. I don't like looking into your eyes saying this. This is this weird. This is bizarre.com. We're recording the podcast technically for the first time ever in person, but it's just this intro. And we're on a couch. <laughs> really close together we have one mic staring into each other's souls which actually is quite appropriate uh-huh for i think the today's guest today's guest today's guest because like you want to talk about place you want to talk about well do you want to talk vulnerability? about vulnerability dance do you want to talk about like I don't know, staring into the soul. Staring into your own soul to make something. Um, yeah. Today's guest is Cody Cook Parrot. As you probably know, because you looked at the title of it, and that's probably why you're here. Yeah. Um, I, what's, we kind of talked about it a little bit in the, in the episode, but like what, how did you find Cody? What's your relationship to Cody's work? Yeah, like through my dance buddies. Oh, really? Like through my dance oh. friends that followed Cody and you know just were really like refreshed like it was like a refreshing thing to see personal practice and like just have it be for Cody not for anyone else like that mm -hmm. practice and then was shared with me and then I was like whoa you know that's so funny yeah that's so yeah. funny um because we spoke to Cody right was I came back to personal practice yeah that's really right weird. back to dance that's yeah, really yeah, yeah. Weird. that's yeah that's funny. We talk a lot about this in the episode, but Cody has such a archive of mm. work on the internet, deeply online. Yeah, my first interaction with my first interaction with Cody's work was their Etsy wedding profile, which is probably to like two thousand and uh, like I remember sitting in my bedroom reading it. In wow. like 2011. It's just going to, honestly, probably earlier than that. Wow. Do you remember when Etsy used to be cool? I do. I when do. When I had a blog, I used to read the Etsy yeah. blog. And yeah. I was like, oh, this person. Wow. Have company. Wow. Yeah. And uh, reading their zines in my naturopath, Dr. Emily Bennett's office. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. How to not always be working mm -hmm. is like how I think I, you know, started to see Cody's work like outside of dance right yeah. like and you know what I mean like as like creative facilitator as like you know all of that mm -hmm. which I feel like is such a I mean so many of the things that Cody has written continue to be resources tools things that we share yeah 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 um why why would you want to listen to this episode who's <sighs> Oh my God. What a question. <laughs> I think if you're a person conflicted about, here's who we speak to a lot of the time. We speak to a lot of people that are conflicted about, do I sell my jam at the side of the road? Mm. Um, and can I also like uh, be deeply interested in the works of Shakespeare and perform them yes. um, at the summer festival? Can I exist right. at the same time as that? And I think, like, absolutely, yes. I think this episode is for anybody who feels, like, I don't know, multi-hyphenates, yes. But I think it's, like, actually deeper than that when you're a multi-hyphenate. Yeah, because I think there's a lot of de there's a lot of choices, a lot of decision fatigue. There's a lot of stuff that yeah. goes into where to put yeah. what. And so this this will be such an adventure yeah. <laughs> for and that the, person. The and, monetizing and, yes. of artistic process, too. Yeah, exactly. And that question of self. Well, real quick. Cody Cook Parrot is a writer and artist living on the Leelanau Peninsula in northern Michigan. They facilitate a weekly writing group called Landscapes and teach classes about writing, quilting, and creative practice. They write the weekly newsletter Monday, Monday. Fab. Subscribe. <laughs> I know, you definitely should. <laughs> and are the host of the podcast Common Shapes. They are the author of the books How to Not Always Be Working and Getting to Center. And just <gasps> the other day, yeah. a new book was announced. 
coming in October, I want to yes. say, later yes, in the yes, year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They also self-published books about their project's personal practice and Friendship Village. Cody has a BFA in dance from the University of Michigan and is an MFA candidate at, candidate at the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics at Naropa University. Their work has been featured in the New York Times, Vanity Fair, Dance Magazine, The Huffington Post, and more. They have two free workbooks, The Creative Ideation Portal and The Weaving in Our Values Toolkit. Both, again, so good. Cody is currently working on a project about Michigan quilt history, which you can participate in. We will drop the link. Also, I'm pretty sure that Cody is still running landscapes. their yeah, landscapes yeah. a couple more weeks to go of that. We'll put all the links yeah, I oh. highly recommend being in space with Cody. I Again, we talked about this in the episode. I've taken a handful of their courses before. I've been in the Zoom room with Cody. And um, I can, like, with a lot of certainty, say this business, this podcast, this space, yeah. retreat, would, would not, not have happened yeah. without Cody's work. And yeah. I'm there's uh, not a lot of artists I feel like I can actually say that about. So mm-hmm. thank you, Cody. Um, welcome to the stage. Welcome, please welcome to the stage. <laughs> Alrighty, today on the podcast we have artist, writer, podcaster, quilter, a dancer, a radio show host, a zine maker, a residency <laughs> host, a shape maker, a dog parent, a facilitator, a professional pivoter, really. Cody Cook Parrot. Please welcome to the stage, Cody Cook Parrot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Phoebe, thank you. That was an amazing <laughs> list. That was the list. I was, was like, wow, that's it's a lot, but it's the list. It's Did beautiful. I forget anything in there? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the deep dive is real. On, <laughs> the deep dive is real. Um, gosh, I I can't imagine. Uh, yeah. home, home owner and land steward. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Painter of cabinets. Painter of cabinets. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was, gonna, I was thinking about the fireplace. Tender, tender of the fire. Yeah. Oh mm. yeah, that's huge. Mm. But mm-hmm. yes, you you did great on the professional side <laughs> of the list. Thank you. <laughs> well, you've had like such a I mean, all artists have such careers, blah 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 blah. But I think you've had a career online. And I think that's like we're getting to like this. I feel I feel I'm feeling old online lately. I don't know about either of you, but it's like <laughs> I you have like a we like you can have like an archive of work now on the internet. Yeah. Um, which is kind of intense I'm sure I wanted to ask like how does the like I don't know how does like being such a multi-hyphenate feel I think a lot of the time people get really stressed about adding like okay but I I do this but I also do that like I I tend herbs in the garden I also like dance with them Um, but like do you think I could add weaver to that collection of things at all and like I think like that's the stress that I hear from our other artists often. And I'm wondering, does that, has that shown up for you? Does that show up for you? Or like, are you cool to just keep adding to the list? <laughs> to the list. Yeah, more, yeah, more to the list. You know, I think um, it doesn't really stress me out. It, it feels so just, you know, since I was a kid, you know, I started dancing when I was a, a child, like since I can remember, and then started taking like dance classes when I was five. And, you know, started really writing, like, kind of seriously when I was nine. Like, that's when I, like, really started, like, writing poetry. And, like, I was, quote, pretending to write a novel about um, the boys who played basketball down the street. And, you know, I had, I just really embodied this, the role of the artist so early that it doesn't, I just, I have to write and I have to dance. I think what came up when you asked the question was really, when someone asks me that sort of like I'm tending to the herbs in the garden and I'm dancing and should I add this other thing to me it's like add as much as you want but don't add it all to your job you know it's like that's I think what is the hardest for like the neurodivergent multi-hyphenate creatives which I'm guessing we all are and yeah, if you're yeah, listening you got we, it. You are. Um, <laughs> and so you know I think I think that's my biggest like lesson and the thing that I tell people is like you know, I really wrote how to not always be working coming out of the experience of like trying to just make everything my job. And that Mm. burnt me out so much. And it's, it's interesting that, you know, dance is what I have a degree in. And what I, I often say I have the most like public displays of, you know, it's like been in dance magazine and the New York times Mm -hmm. and sort of like, whereas like my, my 
sort of self-employment career hasn't been sort of spotlit in, mm-hmm. in the cultural lexicon in the same way. And I make no money from dancing. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it's not part of my job. Um, yeah. but I think people who like my dancing probably buy my books and take my classes, you know, so it's not, they don't have to be separate, but it's not an income ge- generating practice. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what keeps me steady is like, I have my newsletter and I teach and that's in, and, and, and I teach a lot of different things. And that I will say sometimes can feel confusing. <laughs> like, I think people are like, we want to take your writing class, but you make blankets also like it's, it's, but you know, the people find themselves to me. So I, I trust it's working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you end up in like the multi hyphenate land when you are the like, um, I'm thinking, I mean, I was rattling, Jacqueline, was I pestering you about uh, triangulation the other day? That's like something I've been thinking about, like when mm. se- about cell towers. Mm. And I was like, you need three points to make like mm-hmm. anything make sense because mm-hmm. like that's how you triangulate around something. Um, and like, that's just like a deep dive I went on the other day and I was like, that can definitely show up in like my sewing for some reason. You know, mm-hmm. like I think you have to go down all of these different avenues to like find the thing. Um, but I think... Yeah, like when, I don't know, I waffle back and forth so much on like the getting paid for work and like how I feel about it, even as somebody who's been doing it for like a decade. Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. like, this is the best thing ever. Let's like liberate ourselves throughout. And then I'm like, I got to go and become an accountant like now, like stat. And I think, I don't know, I, I don't really love the like moralization of self employment as like, something that's like good or like holier than I don't or radical know. yeah or rad- yeah radical yeah. <laughs> and like I think a lot of the time we're just seeing people like mirror the same I don't know like hellscape tech bro capitalism nonsense mm-hmm. in their own practices I think what I would love to know with that with what Phoebe's saying is like for yourself how do you like do you, is there like a litmus test? Is there like a, is there a knowing? Is there like, how do you check in and go, okay, dancing is expression, but teaching is job or like garden is like, you know what I mean? Tending to process, but quilting is a class. Like how, is there like, what is the like negotiation of that? The discovery of that, the like, like process to finding that? Because I also think that that can be really like a, like a place of tension for a lot of multi-hyphenates and artists too. Some of it is just trying it. And then it's often like what I don't like. And, mm. and I, it, it's yeah. like a, you know, like someone a very a beloved person in my life, like wanted me to commissioned me to make a quilt, which I do not do. I do not mm. sell quilts. I do not commission quilts. I either gift them or I teach the art of quilting. And it took me so long. Like, because it just, mm. I just don't exchange commerce and and quilting in that way. And so it was like, I was like, oh, I can't make this on my own timeline because I was paid for it and I need mm. to finish it. And so that is maybe a litmus test of like, is it uncomfortable? Is it when I do it, does it feel weird? And because I love teaching, I like, I'll teach dance class and make money to teach dance class. I'm mm-hmm. happy. If you're listening and you want me to come teach dance class where you live, I will come teach dance class. Yes. Um, But uh, I don't have much of an experience. Like I've maybe been like hired to perform as a dancer like twice in my life. Uh, It's just and that and that's on purpose. And like it's like like I'm not like calling that in. And so I think it is just. um, Yeah, the litmus test is like, how's my nervous system doing when I think about embodying this practice and exchanging money for it and I think I also just like got good at other ways of doing business in a way that felt good and you know in some ways I think of like yeah my teaching teaching is my day job like you know like I think of like my writing practice in my newsletter which I do make money from but that or dancing as sort of the like and I, I, it's, I struggle to talk about it because I want to be really clear. Like I love teaching, but it is my job. Like mm-hmm. there's absolutely moments where I'm like, gotta go teach quilt class. Yeah. And the second the Zoom room opens, I am like 
on and in it and I love it, but I can be exhausted afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think um, even parts of self-employment include sort of parts that feel more sparkly or parts that feel like a day job or parts that feel like just creative practice. So Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. I'm always like rolling my eyes at the amount of stuff that you need to know about as a self-employed person. Like we were just like for three weeks, a uh, something on the website needed to move someplace to be verified for something. And I needed to talk to a man and the task was going to take five <laughs> minutes. Like I needed God to come move me. Like yeah. it was, yeah. it was <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. my, like on my knees anyway, like those, those moments. And yeah, I don't know. I guess that's where I get like frustrated with the moralization of those things. Yeah. Does the in, okay. I think about ideas like, an individual idea and like I come and assess that thing and then like the idea goes into a container of someplace how how do ideas show up for you and is it like the inverse of that is like I guess part one of the question yeah I definitely you know when I teach or talk about like the business of creative practice or something I'm always talking about you know containers or pots on the stove Mm -hmm. and like I think it does sort of work inversely or backwards for me or some, or something. Mm-hmm. It's like I have the container of my newsletter and because I have that container, yeah. I can like come up with ideas of what to write about or what to insert in, in there. And, but also, I mean, landscapes, which is my new co-working writing group definitely came out of like, I'm about to start grad school to get my MFA in creative writing and I want to write more and I'm working on a new book and it was just, I'm working on two, I'm working on two new books. And so I was just like, I need to be writing. I guess I'll create the container for yeah. myself to write and invite others. I mean, that's really how, Yeah, I yeah. would say most of my job starts from, I need something. Do other people want to do it with me? Oh yeah. That's like the like beauty of being an artist, I think mm-hmm. is like, mm, this world sucks. I want to put this <laughs> thing in there. I need this for me. I mean, Jacqueline and I were having this like debate on the podcast the other day about that's certainly where I come from when I create mm-hmm. what was I don't even remember what you were talking about Jacqueline you were talking about you were talking about how you anger it's mm. like a place that sometimes you start like the world sucks like I want to see something else I need something else for myself yeah. I'm angry about this I'm gonna go make it and I was saying that that is just not that's not where I step into the idea like from a place of frustration or anger. I think, I think I really resonate with like the working backwards, almost like I have to have the, the container to then go like, what's the best thing for it, for it, you know what I mean? Instead of like, have the idea and then build the container that's going to support the idea, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, is there like a lit, it's funny that you were saying, yeah, like a litmus test of like what determines what goes where, or is it like, yeah, like you were saying, like the pot, I like, we're all doing this pots. Like there's like a thing and it must, the thing must be filled with things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I think that it, I'm grateful that at some point I decided my newsletter would be for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was never like, oh, this is a newsletter about quilting. Yeah. Um, It was just like, this is my, I mean, it's very, my newsletter has always very much existed in like a very Tumblr blog. Yeah. You know, I was a Zanga girly, you know, I was a live journal girly. Like, you know, it's just very much, here's what I did this, here's what I think from the past week. And then Mm -hmm. I could drop anything in. So Um, And and I do, you know, my quilting class, which I taught really consistently for three years, was really the place that I would just drop in any of my research into that container. So it was like, yes, it's about quilts, but depending on like whose autobiography I'm reading or what memoir I'm reading or what podcast I'm listening to, you know, it's going to each each class was very different because it was really the sort of like lessons of creativity revolved around whatever I was paying attention to at that time. So I think, you know, even if you do have a really specific container, like this is a class for making quilts, you can add in whatever other information you want to add in. And that, that's really, um, 
I just, I'm just coming back from studying for a week with my dance mentors who are a collective called The Architects. And that's really their work. It's like, it's a dance workshop, but they're always bringing in like, you know, one of them's a poet, one of them studies Feldenkrais, one of them, yeah. you know, so they're all working in other modalities and they're bringing that research into the work. And so mm. I think that's, that's, you know, it's like the container can be really specific, but you can sort of bring anything into it that you want. I'm wondering if there's something about like performance and like when you feel like you have the like ugh, shock horror. I was a musical theater kid. <laughs> no one's ever surprised by that. I think like when you are gifted like performance from like a young age or like told that you're like allowed to show up, I do feel like there is something in that where it's like, oh, well, this is just like a hat I'm going to try on and like I can stuff whatever I want into the performance of a quilting class or writing or facilitating or whatever. It's like, again, it's just a container and I can fill the container mm -hmm. with what it like <laughs> Everything's a play. <laughs> Everything's, Everything's a play. play. Everything's a dance. Everything's a play. Yes, I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like that's so much more exciting to me than like here is what people learn in a place at a time. Because like that's never what we're actually dealing with. I think like context is so important all the time. And like the context in which we're creating in the world yeah. is so much more important than like what mm -hmm. people get. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I was going to say like, I love that we're going here because it's like, how do we like, I I'm curious to know, Cody, like, is there like a reconciliation or something <laughs> that has to happen with when something has money attached to it? Right. Um, because I think like, I'm assuming that people will that people come to class or people come to a container and they have an expectation maybe around like, what this what they're going to be taught what they're going to learn what they're quote unquote going to get and how do we kind of like reconcile the expectations of the selling of a thing right and like the exchange of a transaction right and like the um exploration like bring whatever you want into it that week kind of like space like how do we you know how do we balance those things do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a very poetic answer, but I make really right. clear sales pages that are mm -hmm. kind of like, I'm a crazy person. You're going to take <laughs> class with a crazy person. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm re I mean, I don't quite say that, but yeah. you know, I am like, I am a tornado person. I am mm -hmm. not a trauma informed space holder, facilitator, healer. Like I like you, if you're going to come to my class, you need to understand that think big big feelings will come up and you have to have your tools to be able to regulate through them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I say that because not in like a sassy way, but in just like a really factual way. I try to be just overly transparent because mm -hmm. I want people to feel safe and okay in my spaces. And I jump all over the place, you know? Right. I'm I, and I'm really like public about like, I'm a sober addict, I'm bipolar, yeah. I have ADHD, like, yeah. you know, here are, but I also like, I don't need to like list all of the things as much as I just try to paint a picture of what the room is like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with quilt class, I feel like it's much more a word of mouth. Like this is the vibe of quilt class. Yeah. It's, I'm not like, here's the research I'm dropping in. I'm really like, here's what we do every week. You make a blanket at the end. And then I think word kind of spreads like this is an art class that maybe will change your life and people sign up. And um, so, yeah, I, I do try to keep some mystery still to the work and what's what's going to be in it and trust that people will show up. But yeah, I do in terms of that, like you were asking, like that expectation of the exchange of commerce and the container yeah, I just try to be like so incredibly clear with like, what, here's if you've never been in one of my Zoom rooms, here is what it will feel like. Mm -hmm. And I think my little disclaimer says something like, you might see your ex girlfriend there. I don't know. I don't know who's going to be there. 200 <laughs> people might be there. 20 people might sign up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And so you're signing up with the information you have, and there's yeah. no refunds. So make a yeah. decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think that's, I mean, I have found, I'm going to speak for myself. I'm going to speak for myself. Yes. <laughs> speak from the eye. Yeah. 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 Um, in being like a person, uh, 
okay, I guess we're going to talk about Instagram and being like a person online. Like you can say, like, I feel like I could show up like naked, crying, being like, here's all of the horrible things that I thought about myself today. Just like me, Mm. not even like, you know, all the external things. And people are still going to paint whatever picture they have of you, right? And so I think you've done like a really beautiful job when you show up with like trans. I think like transparency is more like, uh, I don't know. I feel like authenticity is one of those words that's just been like Instagram cursive to hell mm-hmm. that like mm-hmm. we don't even have like a real meaning of that word anymore. But it's like when it's like transparent, and, like honest, like actually honest, here's what's going on. Like I have found in running like our business and just relating with other people like that gets me so much I don't know I can just like sleep really well at night even if people have whatever opinions or feelings that they're gonna have because like well I just was me like in the truest sense um and I was honest and I was generous and I was kind and I I was like as transparent as I could be and like I think that is I don't know. Yeah, if we're going to talk about like sales pages, like I think like that's the like if you can do that in a sales page or you can do that in exchange with somebody like that's like the kindest thing I think you can do instead of I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what other people are doing. I I really admire that in you and it's given me um I mean, I I feel like we should have started this. There wouldn't be do you ever without I mean, at the very least, I picked up, this is funny. I mean, this is what I was saying without like an, you have like such an archive. You have such an archive of work. I remember sitting in my naturopath's office and uh, she had her little zine library and I picked up, what's it? How to, how a social media network gave me my best friends. Uh My career. Career. True love. True love. And and made me me want to kill myself. Okay, great. Die. die. Great. Just die. Just pass on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I just want to fling myself off. Of right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and oh, <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't know what kind of wording we put at the top of this. I mean, I think I say In I the want to fling myself In the naturopath's office. Like, I don't yeah. know. You know, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, what yeah, a scene. Yeah. Everything is theater. Yeah. Everything she is was theater. like, Do everything's mean? a play. Yeah. yeah. Everything is Everything's theater. a play. Actually, I'll really paint the picture for you. It was community acupuncture time. And like the cotton gauze curtain was like there. And there was like music. And I like. I don't know, and me and like made a loud noise when I walked in the room, obviously, and like picked up the thing and was like, oh, <laughs> made another loud noise. Anyway, I think that there's, yeah, I think transparency is very clearly a value. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that your work and the way you work is a really great example of having a values driven, not just like we often, I think, think that things can only be value based if it's like art or creative and not business, right? And I think that you have, you're have you a really great example of running a values-based business. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm just curious to know, like, what other things besides transparency are close to you when you're creating an exchange with, you know? Yeah, I think a lot about financial accessibility. Uh, I think a lot about who's in the room and who's not in the room and why. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm thinking about it most like closely right now because of this new digital group that's about to start landscapes because I really like thought about the price for a long time and really did a lot like I and I asked I like, you know, that's the other thing that I try to remind my students or peers or colleagues is like you can just ask your followers Mm -hmm. or your readers like what do you want? Like, what classes do you want to see? Like, what price point feels correct? What feels Mm -hmm. like too much? What feels like too little? So, you know, there have been almost zero times I've said no to someone to to come to a class. Maybe quilt class is capped, so there's a certain amount I need to make. And so somebody might say, hey, can I pay this much? And I might come back and say, I need it to be this much, but you can split that up into three payments and they'll be like, okay, great. You know? Mm -hmm. And so for the most part, I don't say no to anyone. Landscapes has low and no cost spots outside of the sliding scale and also has, um, 
Brandy Cheyenne Harper, who's an amazing knitter and writer, is running a BIPOC circle in the group. Mm -hmm. And so, like, those are just structures and frameworks that I, I'm asking myself, like, as a white teacher, as a queer teacher, as a non-binary teacher, like, I'm always thinking about, like, what identities am I bringing to the room and what do I want to see more of? What do I want to see less of? What will spark more generosity in the group? So I often, like, call on people instead of just wait for raised hands. Like, I'm sort of curating, like, who's going to step into the into the dance, if you will, into the play, like, mm-hmm. who's going to be next. So, yeah, those are, I think, and just really, like, you know, I really weave my values into, you know, I might write an essay about, like, falling in love, and then at the end it's, like, and free Palestine. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I don't have to necessarily write, like, a think piece every time about, you know, the political landscape, but it's really important to me to stay current and speak my values into those containers that I make with the fear of loss sometimes of Mm -hmm. loss of readers loss of finances loss of money and it's it's always worth it to me and Mm -hmm. I think the last value I'll say which has really changed recently last year I made the most money that I've ever made in a year and was exhausted like was just like what the was the point of that and spent a lot of it like with some of my like money habits like I'm kind of (laughs) so this year I'm sort of like redoing a lot of the like spending Mm. and just getting comfortable earning less Mm. I'm just I'm earning much less this year than I did last year maybe even the year before and so um I think that's another sort of value is that I'm just having more experiences with my friends Mm -hmm. and my collaborators and am just a lot more active in my private life and Mm -hmm. and practice Mm -hmm. than this sort of constant like churning out of material and that I'm so happy today like I'm so much happier and Mm. and to be honest like a little broke like you know like I to, to be really clear like I I think am somewhat of a higher earner as a as an artist as a writer and you know my Not only do I now pay my taxes, which I didn't used to, I also have back taxes, which comes out to about $30,000 a year that I have to pay just in my back taxes, plus my taxes, um, plus other debt. And so pretty quickly, my income kind of skyrockets down. And I have been doing having some month to month months this year um, without, you know, savings or generational wealth. And so... um, it's been a little bit uncomfortable and yeah, I'm also like here to report that within that discomfort, I'm also, I've also never liked myself this much yeah. or my life in a lot of ways. So um, mm. <laughs> thank you for saying it. that. Yeah. 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 I feel really, I, as like, I don't know, other weirdo out wandering in the world and like bumping into the many things that you've made um, feel like capable of showing up the same way because I'm like okay well if Cody's out here doing it then like exactly exactly we all can Mm -hmm. actually that (laughs) makes me like so happy like I can't tell you enough it brings tears to my eyes like that is all I want from my work is to be like look if I can do this you can do this and here are the ways that I did it so maybe you can skip a few of the like wave crashes on the way there so thank you for sharing that oh that that's really, really happy. i i do i mean and i think about it a lot and it's made me really ask like we have a when this comes out retreat will already have happened but we have a retreat coming up in september and uh it's i think because i don't know because we are i i hate all of these words i'm about to use because i just feel like they're meaningless now it sucks honest <laughs> like because mm-hmm. we're honest because we show up in um or all of those things that I had saying, you know, because I show up just like, hey, here's me. Who are you? How are you? What's going on in the context of us? And also like, what direction is the wind blowing? What would you have for breakfast today? And like all of like the actual things that I think inform um, everything. I think people are taking a little, uh, they're like, but okay, but like, what's the catch? I'm like, no catch. Yeah, it's the shoe. No catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, no, no. I just like, I just really don't want to, girl boss my way to death because that's what I just see all around and like I'm sure any like business coach would tell us to like probably 10 times our prices but like I'm just not interested in that like that's not again like who's in the room and like who needs to be here and who actually needs this and why am I even doing this in the first place and like 
Mm -hmm. know, why did I get up out of bed today? And like those things have to inform, sure, price, but also just like the container again yeah. too. And that has to that has to feel good. Cause like otherwise I'll just I don't know, I'll go work at a Starbucks, I guess. Cause I've done that before and I can do it again. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that pays my rent. Yeah. yeah. Everything is theater. Uh so I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about, oh gosh, there's a name for these folks. Like we're in improv class. Okay, we're all at improv class right now. Great. And we're in improv class. And we have our we have our prompt. We have our our goal. We have our idea. And the first person who yes ands, like the first person who starts, there's a word for that that I can't think of right now. The first person who enters initiator? the circle. Initiator. Yes. There's like all there's like there's like a I went to theater school. There's like a term. There's like a term there's for a term. that person. Okay, like who cares? <laughs> whatever. There's a word. We, we can say initiator. We can say whatever. But I think that there, there, that that is like kind of always what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at thinking about like whose work do I want to like? What path do I want to follow? Whose work do I want my work to kind of look like? Like who do I want? Who are the muses? Who are the resources? Who are the whatever? That's often the person who like enters the circle first and goes like, I will try and fail. You know what I mean? And I think like there are certain people who can enter the circle first and try and fail and are more obviously like safe or protected by the world. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and then there are people that aren't. And I, I have, I try and like follow that lesson and like follow those people um, for like the next answer, you know? And I think mm -hmm. just to go back to the blowing of the smoke, I think Cody, your work has like, I, that's how I kind of view you as like a, you step into like the circle first kind of, and like with the understanding that it might be safer for you to do that. Right. than like other people that are in the circle. Mm -hmm. And I think as like a white artist, you know what I mean? Like as someone who like, I, I think about the I think about the responsibility of that often. You know what I mean? And like the and 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 yeah, that's whatever that is. I think that that is what you're doing. You're like walking into the improv space and saying yes and and giving like a space for other people to do that. Yeah, yeah something that um my dance teachers say is like when we're literally on the perimeter of the space and waiting for someone to enter the dance mm -hmm. is is it more generous like, let's say the dance has begun. Is it more generous for me to enter or is it more generous for me to stay on the outside? Mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of what I'm tending to in a lot of my work. And yeah, I've definitely entered the circle too early or <laughs> too late or had or messed up in the mm -hmm. middle of the circle and had someone <laughs> say like that kind of wasn't the right move and, mm -hmm. and have been really lucky to be... Um, like gently corrected and pivoted a few times for sure. And yeah, I think, yeah. And thanks again for reflecting that. I think that that is um, something that is uncomfortable a lot is that I am often the first one to try the thing and with very few models for mm -hmm. what it, what it could look like. And it, but, but now at age 36, sort of like 13 years into my career, you know, even you know 20 something years of being deeply online i <laughs> deeply. i it's really not uncomfortable anymore yeah. it's really mm -hmm. just a part of like which is the gift i think to get to give to others is that it's not really hard for me i just i just do it and yeah 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 so who are your people that that would be my like where like who do you turn to who's like oh, this person walked into the center or like, you know, who are you learning from? Who are you, even if it's just right now, because I'm sure yeah. there's a lexic, like we could go real, <laughs> but like, who who are you inspired by? Um, uh, Faria Roshin comes to mind, who's mm. a, an amazing writer and poet and dear friend of mine. Um, she really, especially I think in the last year around um the genocide in palestine i think just took so many risks in mm -hmm. her career and in her writing to bring us f 
facts and journalism mm -hmm. and and poetry still um, in a way that I just I really look to her as like she really goes in even when yeah. she's uncomfortable and mm -hmm. I learn a lot from her in that way and I'm really grateful for her. Um, I think on like a like a really zoomed out from my own community scale, I think about writers like Octavia Butler, I think about Angela Davis, I think about Joan Didion, I think about Atel Adnan, who was an amazing artist, shape, shape definitely a big shape making inspiration to me. Um, yeah, I have all of these sort of like, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking a lot about like, gay history and just I think just being gay and being non-binary is definitely like a big part of like just existing in that mm -hmm. way you you are a part of a lineage of going in first I mean it makes me feel I want to cry yeah. um you know like I just I feel like as I walk through the world you know through in, in a queer body I just yeah, think about, you know, the first the first brick throwers and the sit-ins yeah. and, you know, just just carving that space and how and even my choice to live rurally in northern Michigan is um, there are queer and trans people here, but there's very few of us. And so, you know, to to see more like I've, I've had some friends from Detroit move up and, you know, to see more and more people sort of arrive is. Yeah, it is part of the like I'm I am I am like the first of my group a lot, but like I am not the first initiator. You know, I come from a lineage of dance, queer, sober yeah. initiators and that really tethers me like to be like I might I might be stepping in by myself, but I am deeply not alone. Mm. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's jazz, man. That's so that's, good. That's that's God just coming through. You know? Yeah. No, I that's even, I didn't make that one up. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> Um that's really beautiful. I I think we should leave that there. Is there anything that you want to say? Do you want to say anything about dance? Do you want to talk about writing? Yeah, we, here yes, if you have this, it. this this share from earlier. That was an, that was an hour ago. Like that that you posted? Did you well, yesterday? Or was yesterday? yesterday. Yes. Yeah, so oh, okay. yesterday, so um I was just I just came back from dance camp with my mentors and which is in twenty fifteen where I invented personal practice was mm. sort of after being at this intensive and just being like, I need to dance more, like I should just make an Instagram account and dance. And then I posted some videos and then was like, I should do this every day for a year. And then I did that, and then um, which was a miracle. I can't believe I never skipped a day. And you're a Gemini, I, right? I'm, yes, five planets yeah. in Gemini. Oh, yes. Wow. What? I know. <laughs> Scary. Scary. Blessings to you. Blessings. Blessings to me and all those who love me. Yes, it's, it's what I always say. Blessings to all of those. Um, yes, my sun, Mercury, Venus, Chiron, and Midheaven are all in. Hell yeah. Gemini. Sure. Why yes. not? But yeah. I'm Virgo rising Capricorn moon, and that's why I have a job. And, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And somewhat on the planet still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just with all these dancers and just... So, you know, I made this decision to stop using Instagram for my yeah. job. And so yeah. I what really happened, you guys are going to love this in the on your journeys of neurodivergence. So two <laughs> years ago, two over two years ago, I I my virtual assistant, God bless her, Hannah, the patience this person has with me, um, <laughs> took my Instagram logins so that I yeah. like couldn't uh, log in anymore. And she was posting for me. And at some point I got locked out of personal practice and couldn't like find the password and like, mm. a, and then also had deleted it, the, whatever email went with personal mm. practice. And so at some point I just gave up. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to get in here anymore. I don't really want to bother Hannah. And that lasted for two years. Wow. Oh, wow. So. It wasn't that I didn't want to dance, but I just like lost the container. And so mm. I just haven't been dancing. Right. And so I'm like, I don't know where to put this. I don't have another container for a dance. And so 
I, I was around some people who really were reflecting back to me like personal practice was so special. And then I think because I'm not using Instagram for my job anymore, I was I had so, sort of also linked like, well, I can't use Instagram for personal practice because that's Instagram. Yeah. But Instagram famously follows no people. It there's no there's my name isn't listed, my website isn't on there. Like if you didn't know it was me, you would maybe have no idea. Like I think a mm. lot of people have no idea who I am who follow personal practice. That's kind of they're fun. like that's a random person who makes dance videos. Yeah. And so yesterday is that a person? <laughs> who knows? Is that a person? I finally <laughs> yeah. figured out how to log back in and just dropped the, just drop the vid. And mm. the people were very happy. And then I made another video today. And Drop I don't know if they're happy or not because I'm here now. So, um, yeah. yeah, it feels really fun. It's It doesn't hook me in. It. And here's the other thing, right? It's mm. not connected to commerce. I don't have to wonder if anybody's following me back or not because I don't follow anyone. And so it doesn't hook me in in any mm. way, shape, or form. I just make a dance video, put it there. I'll, I'll lo- I like to look. I like to see what the people say. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but it's not um, – there's no feed. There's no feed to scroll. There's no one to check in with. Um, so it's, it doesn't – so, yeah, it feel, I don't feel like I'm back on Instagram. It's just like personal practice videos maybe want to exist again, and so I'm going to let them. And um, – just so a yeah, stage. Were, just a just, stage. Just another stage to walk yeah. in on for sure. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I I fucking love that. I don't like I just love like the magic and the mysticism of that. Yeah. Timing. Two I years. That. that would just be gone in my head. I'd be like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was gone in my head. I was like, personal practice is done. Like I a hundred percent accepted at some point in the last two years that yeah. like that was a project that I did and it's now finished. And um you know, for, for anyone listening who maybe is that far away from a part of their practice, the real trick was in posting yesterday was having no expectations. Mm-hmm. I was like, three people might see this for all I know. I have mm-hmm. no idea algorithmically what personal practice will be like at this point. Mm-hmm. And I have to not care. I have to be posting this just to like release mm-hmm. the moves into the world and... um Yeah, it really felt, I think that's what, like, I just, I couldn't think too hard about, like, I couldn't think about it as like, this is my first dance after two years. It has to be so good. I was just like, come back to Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Nobody cares. They're, everybody's just going to be like, oh, my God, you made I a mean, dance video. That's the the joke is, like, nobody ever cares. Like, we're no all one. so – This is, like, whenever yeah. I teach about newsletters, people are like, well, what if I post on a Tuesday instead of a Monday? I'm like, yeah. no one is thinking about you. No, no one. No, no one. Because they're no one. really, really busy thinking about themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's no one cares. And that's okay. And that's beautiful. And, yeah, the more – and it's, like, no one cares and something you said earlier, Phoebe, that I loved was like or people do care and they don't like me and those people are not my people and they can go find somebody else who does Mm -hmm. not go two years without posting yeah or they do care and they would be happy to receive your newsletter on a wednesday instead of a monday and like you know what i mean like whatever (laughs) like yeah 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 yeah. what are we talking about yeah Yeah. what are we talking about what are we actually talking about here when Mm -hmm. when people i i think it's really funny like people are like phoebe i get this question a lot um I'm, I'm, I would bet, Cody, I bet you get some version of this as well, where people are like, you're so confident. How are you so confident? I'm like, I'm an autistic woman. Like, I'm not <laughs> confident. I just have big earrings yeah. on. Like, yes, I, what, yes. I, I'm not just confident. Like, I just dance. You know? Yeah. Like, yes, I think yes. we – I don't know, whatever that is, whatever. I just think it's like, I we're, I think other people are looking for something and like the thing that you're actually probably looking for is just like, I don't know, inner permission sometimes. Right. Yeah, um, and I think it's, it's so nice to think like, I think today at my current age and like length of my career, like I am confident a lot of the time yeah. actually. And it's just not, it's just really inconsistent. And mm-hmm. for me, like, I, um, this is such a random, like, thing to drop into this conversation, but, like, I, you know, track my cycle really specifically and mm-hmm. really struggle with PMDD. And so there are usually 10 to 12, 15 days sometimes that I have absolutely no confidence and I still write my newsletter generally. Mm-hmm. I still do the thing in that time. 
and it just maybe looks different or has a different texture or feels different. But yeah, I think that that's definitely another thing I teach is like feel feel the discomfort and do it anyways. You know, yeah. trust trust God and hit send is my is my yes. newsletter tagline. But um, yeah, you just have to you just kind of have to hit send either way. And uh, and that to me is about like ser- being of service too. And and just the beautiful reflections you've both given to me today about my own work is like that's that is also part of the mystery of like I don't know who it's going to touch and who it's going to change but I have enough information that it does touch and change people and and also makes me money and so that's why it's my job you know Mm -hmm. is because Mm -hmm. I think it works and it provides me a way to have a home and feed my dog and feed myself and travel and and live my life so yeah Mm. I could say 5,000 more things personally but I think this is also, couldn't we all? Couldn't we all? Mm -hmm. But like we can keep the dance going in other ways. Cody, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. This was truly a blessing. And like I said, there wouldn't be do you ever if there weren't. And I think I mentioned this. I took the World Needs Your Ongoing Class. Is that what the name of it was? Years ago. The first one. And um like that, I that was like early-ish pandemic too. I think, yeah, and 20, I was early twenty twenty one. Trying to what figure, I'm like, okay, cool, yeah. I don't like looking at photos on my phone from then. Anyway, um, I don't know if anyone else gets like you have like a memory of like a bad haircut in like twenty twenty. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, there's too much darkness associated. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. 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 um. It really shifted a lot for me, and I'm just really appreciative of you. And there's, like, a, a couple of artists that I realize I'm like, oh, I know them from that container. And that's always, like, mm-hmm. so cool. what's really cool. So go take a class with Cody because you don't know how yes, it will change your life. Yes, please do. Please do. Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah, any, anything that you want to promote? Final words? Oh, yeah. yeah my Yeah, my last thing that is um, I hope people come to is Landscapes, which is – a writing group that meets every Tuesday and Thursday. We also have writing retreats. We have cave days. We have visiting writers. It's sliding scale 33 to $77 a month. If that is too much, mm. there are low and no cost spots. You can email me and we're just, we're going to write. We're going to just really dive into writing. And it's, it's, it's hosted in Mighty Networks and the people who are there already are literally so cool. So you get to hang out with really cool people. And if you're like, but Cody, I'm not a writer. Um, if you like the act of writing or have a practice of writing in your business, you should come. So I hope to see many people there. And I think we're going to take the month of October off, but um, we'll start meeting again in November. So oh, cool. good to know. Yeah. you're listening to this, come yeah. on over. I'm thrilled about Cave Days in particular. Yes, me too. Those, that was on my calendar and was yes. like, fuck off. Yes, that was a... Um, <laughs> That was a suggestion of Nicole Antoinette, who's an amazing oh, writer lovely. and facilitator. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, she was like, I think you should have some cave days. I was like, okay, I think you're right. Mm. Gorgeous. Well, thanks so much again. I really appreciate this conversation and you and uh, many blessings. Many blessings. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for saying that. Yes, yes. Thank you both so much. Thank you for listening to Do You Ever Feel Like, a podcast from Do You Ever Media. Follow this chaos wherever you get your pods. Our artwork is by Simon Pang. You can write us at doyouoverpod at gmail.com. Learn more about our work at doyouovermedia.com. Or by following us at doyouovermedia. Okay, bye! Okay, bye! (laughs) 